Hey everyone, Sarah Picaro. Today's video is going to be about um, upbringing, environment, and how it contributes and relates to the environment and the relationships you have today, specifically around the areas of criticism and fears, uh, also expectations. So if you're with a partner, you're with a person that you're constantly afraid around. Maybe you're afraid to just be yourself. You're afraid to say the wrong thing. You're afraid that anything that you say will be the beginning of an argument. Uh, you're, you're afraid to go out, try new things. You've got all these things in the back of your mind that you want to do, you're excited to do, or that you dream about doing, have always thought about doing, yet you don't do them because you're afraid. Uh, you, you know, on one hand, that your life would be dramatically different that it would be improved if you could just go and do these things. But because of this relationship, you, you don't, you're afraid of what they're going to say. Maybe you've put yourself out there and you've tried to go do different things in the past. Uh, and that person has cut you down, brought you down, criticized you. And now you're just simply afraid. You're afraid to go do these new things and, and all of your time, all of your energy, your emotions go towards this person and go towards, uh, inward towards yourself in a negative way. And you're just stuck, you're just stuck and frozen in a state of fear, like a, a fear sickle. <laughs> so, um, or you're getting into this position in this place where you do try new things and all of the things that you try to do, regardless of what the outcome is, maybe it's a really positive outcome. It just feels like it's never enough. It feels like even though you've, you've done your best, you made it perfect, whatever it is, even when you've not only met expectations, but far exceeded those expectations, it still feels as if it's never good enough. Nothing you can do is ever good enough. This shows up in the realm and space of toxic relationships, particularly when you're in relationships with narcissists, whether it's a, a partner, whether it's a friend, whether it's an upbringing by a family member, uh, whatever it is, if you're around people who are constantly criticizing you, constantly putting you down rather than, than helping to bring you up, it makes sense for you to, to be frozen in a fear sickle or to feel like everything you do is never good enough, no matter how big, no matter how small, no matter if you single-handedly remodel the entire home yourself or whether it's something as small as the day-to-day -day things like taking care of the kids, the house, the laundry, cooking, cleaning, all of those things. It's just never, ever good enough. So it, it makes sense logically, if you think about it, that if you're in this environment, uh, that, that you will be stuck in a fear sickle, that you'll be frozen in that. Uh, and there's a lot of pressure, a lot of tension, a lot of heaviness, a lot of burden that comes from having these kind of experiences. And you can feel that it's your responsibility to, to find a way to relieve yourself of this, but you get frozen in that fear cycle. You get stuck in that space. If you're still in that environment, that's one of the first things and one of the best things that you can do to begin to create change in your life. And within yourself is to remove yourself from the toxicity, from the toxic environment and come to realize what realistic expectations are. A lot of us are living in a world of trying to fulfill these expectations, but they're just unrealistic, trying to be perfect and, and are met with criticism, with judgment and, and get frozen in this fearsical state that you can't even go out to the grocery store without worrying, well, what is this person going to be thinking about me? What are they going to be saying about me? And, and thinking that you can read their minds or the thinking that they're always thinking harsh, critical, negative, and judgmental things about you. And obviously that's not a, a good state to be in. So it's a space that we avoid putting ourselves into. And part of it, uh, it's this connection with this awareness of this okay, this is what I'm feeling, right? I either feel everything or I feel nothing at all. I feel frozen. I feel like I'm always afraid. I'm always terrified. And when that happens, when that occurs, it is common to want to return to this space that feels safe 
And sadly, the space that feels safe is being alone, not reaching out or to return to the abuser, not because it is a safe space, but because it's familiar. There's a difference between safety and familiarity. So you're not safe in that space, but at least it's familiar. At least your mind knows what to expect. And even if it's not a good outcome or a positive one, it's an expected outcome. You, you know what you're going to get. To get out of that space is to step into the space of the unknown. You don't know what you're going to get, what's going to happen. And that's the hard truth. I mean, a hard truth is that we're, we're hardwired to need approval and to need connection. And so you're constantly going back to the person that you're not getting the approval from to try and get the approval again, to try and, and get that good feeling. So that's why many, many people report that it feels as if it's a drug. You feel addicted to it. Going back to this thing or this space or this environment that I know is not good for me, but I step outside of that and I'm okay for a time. And then I find myself going back to it. And that's because you get frozen in that fear cycle. You start to step out and thaw out and then go, ah, I don't know. What if all of this happens? And then your mind goes to that. What if state? And then if this, then that, and then you find that your mind just goes down these dark rabbit holes, like chases the, the rabbit down these dark holes. And then you just feel completely lost and stuck. So if you're Finding yourself in this space, you know, you're probably making connections to past experiences that led you to where you are today, this current space that you're stuck in. And when that occurs, you're, you're in the right space. It may not feel like it, but that is the space to be in, to have this awareness. That's the first step. And the next step is to understand that these experiences have had an impact on your nervous system, have had an impact on, on your thoughts, your feelings, your sensations, your belief. I mean, so many people say it's all, it's all in my head. It's all in my mind. That's right. Right. You don't get this experience from your pinky finger. So it makes sense that it has had an impact on your nervous system, on your mind, the way it's wired, the way that your own patterns and actions and behaviors are impacted and affected. And if that's the space that you're in and you're realizing, yes, that person has their own patterns, behaviors, and experiences, this is the way that they have influenced me. And now I'm ready to break free from my own habits, patterns, behaviors, and actions. But that's the space that I'm stuck in. I don't know what to do. I'm frozen in that fear sickle space and I'm ready to completely thaw out, not be afraid that I begin to thaw out and then go back to being frozen. Then that's where hypnosis and you know, using your unconscious mind, rapid transformational therapy can make the most profound impact and difference in your life in the most fast and efficient way. So I know exactly what it's like to be there. I've shared some, some really personal posts and stories, you know, on all different social media accounts, um, particularly one with how my body was physically responding, breaking out in hives. And I had a number of people share the physical experiences that their bodies have, have gone through as well. And I mean, and for everything from fibromyalgia to cancer, to hives, to all of these tests and medical diagnosis with blood work and tests coming back, quote unquote, normal, yet they were still having this uh, panic attacks, anxiety attacks, incredibly intense migraines and headaches, um, IBS, thyroid issues, you name it because uh, the body keeps the score. And yes, there's an incredible and fantastic book about that, but just reading a book doesn't you know, go as far as to do the inner work using your own unconscious mind to begin to reshape, reform, and reprogram your thoughts so that you can live um, a very, very different life. One that will get you on the right path so you get out of that negative cycle and loop and pattern that you're currently frozen and stuck in now. So if anything, this video resonates with you and you're thinking, yes, I've had similar experiences in my past and I don't know what to do, but I have to do something different and you're ready to do that something that's different, then I would love to talk to you about how I work one-on-one -on -one with clients to get that incredibly profound change that they're looking for in their life using the very resource that experienced those things, right? Your body, your mind. Uh, so 
please reach out and connect with me. Uh, you can always send me a private message. Uh, there's tons of information on my website as well about hypnosis, about rapid change and transformational therapy. So thank you guys. I hope this video helps shine some light in the areas that are perhaps in the darkness for you. And uh, like I said, I would love to, to connect and look forward to it. You can always find uh, the links in the video below description to do so. Thank you.